Hello everybody, my name is Sean McCullough and I wanted to show you an Amazon service that came out, I think about a year ago, that I've been playing with a little bit and I kind of like it. And it's called the Amazon EC2 Image Builder. Uh, the purpose of this product or the service is to be able to take a golden image of your AMI, let's say it's the Amazon Linux 2, and to build a new version that has your configurations, it has your agents installed, it has your applications maybe, and to do that in a kind of event-driven architecture, all living inside of Amazon AWS. You probably, if you're doing this kind of automated image build pipeline, you might be doing it locally using, I don't know, Ansible and Packer maybe, or even if you're doing it in the cloud, you're maybe using Terraform and some other different scripting. And those work great. I, I, don't, I don't say, I say not, you keep using them. But this gives you a way to do it all within Amazon. And it has some nice little features to really incorporate that event-driven architecture inside of your image pipeline. So let's take a look at the image builder. Uh, it's right here under, uh, well, we do EC, you look at by image builder. It's right here, it's the EC2 image builder. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a pipeline. And the pipeline is going to have a set of components and each of the components does some kind of script or run something on your local virtual machine. So you're gonna, in your pipeline, you're gonna say, hey, start with this AMI, uh, spin that AMI into an EC2, install these different things that are described in your components, and then take a snapshot and now you have your new baseline AMI that you're gonna to use to deploy your marketing website. So let's build a, a pipeline. Um, we're gonna call this pipeline the marketing web uh, pipeline. So it's gonna build our marketing website. So this is for the marketing website. Hopefully I spelled marketing right. Uh, you can identify how fat, how often you want this thing to run. Let's just run it manually because we're just doing a little demo. And then of course you could give it a key. So um, I usually kind of like, what's the purpose? Uh, the purpose is for marketing. And I might use that in, uh, when I start doing my scans or some kind of evaluation of my AMIs. I can know, okay, why did I build this? I said you use components, and a component is a, um, a component specific, specifically describes how you're going to install something. A bunch of those components together makes a recipe. I, I realize recipe, pipeline, component, there's a lot of names here that um, don't really go to well together. But... Uh, you, we're going to create a new recipe, and this recipe is going to be called uh, Build Marketing. We're going to get a version number, 1.0.0. All right. Uh, we'll not have a description. Uh, we're going to select our starting point, which is going to be an Amazon Linux 2 AMI. Uh, we're going to select our image name, which we'll grab the x86 one, and we'll use the latest version of the OS, let's say. All right, for this particular recipe. A recipe will build a single AMI. All right, we're gonna set our working directory, we'll just do slash temp. And now we start picking our components. Now, I can go grab a component that's already out there. Let's say I wanna install a CloudWatch agent onto it, all right? I might wanna create my own. What I'll do is I'll get this, well, let's do this. We'll do create a new one. So we'll create our own component. Um, your components are either build components or test components. The, the name is self-explanatory. A build component will tell you how to, will basically describe how to install something. A test component determines is the AMI working as expected. So we'll build a build, a test, a build one, excuse me. All right, we're going to pick Linux as our, our operating system. Our versions, we're going to use the Amazon Linux 2. We could pick more than one for this particular component. And this one is going to do, I don't know, update yum. So we'll get a version, it's very important. And so this will do an yum update. All right. So uh, we'll start with an example. The, this is the definition document that describes exactly what's gonna happen with this component. What is gonna happen on this EC2? If you're doing any CI CD pipelines or if you've done Ansible or any of those kind of uh, uh, infrastructure as code, you're probably used to using An Ansible, I'm sorry, um, YAML or JSON to describe how to build something. This is no different. Uh, I'm going to give it a name of yum update. Uh, this will update yum. 
Uh, that's the name of the component. So we have phases. Our phases are either build, validate, or test. It will do them in these order. We'll only have a build because I don't want to spend the time coming up with a test, but our build is uh, we're going to do uh, yum update. Okay. Uh, execute bash. That sounds simple, uh, easy enough. And I'm going to do sudo yum dash y update. All right. I could create a validator to ensure that it actually worked, and that validator can also output things to a uh, report file. We're just going to delete them for now. All right, create our component. You can see that your component should do one thing really well. And you also can see where I was testing it out earlier before I did the recording. So these are our particular individual uh, components that I have created. Let's go back in here. Let's do a little refresh. I'm going to go grab the ones owned by me. And there's our yum update that I just created. All right. I can now create uh, select which tests I want to run. A test is not really to ensure that yum has been updated. Oh, let me go back to here. I want to get a couple more. I don't want just one. Let's do CloudWatch. Uh, oh, there's a Python one. So let's do Python. These are components that Amazon has already created for us. OK, so you can go and grab these. The nice thing about it, we got this little sequence view and I can reorder how I want these to run. I want to run first yum, then Python install, and then we'll install the CloudWatch. I can select particular versions of this component. Maybe I only want to use 1.0 or some version of 1.x. You know, 1.0 and 1.1 are both fine. We will ignore that for now. We can be very sophisticated here. All right. I can create our test component, or I can grab a test component. Um, you know, one test component, which is nice, is this H keys. Sometimes I have spun up an EC2 and there was no SS, public SSH key was installed. I don't know why, but I could click that and ensure, yes, so when this builds, after the AMI is all done building, all the components are run, it'll validate that, yes, there's actually SSH keys on there as expected. We'll just take that off to speed up the, the deployment time. I can identify what size of a, a, a you know a volume I want to use. We'll just leave that next. All right. Um, I can describe how I want the EC2, the EC2 that's being used to build this new AMI. Remember, you're starting off with an AMI. Uh, then you're spinning it up as a living, running EC2. You're installing all your stuff, all your components, and then you take a snapshot. I can identify what VPC to do that in. Um, I can give it an AMI, I'm sorry, an uh, uh, IAM instance profile, because maybe this EC2 is going to go reach out to parameter store to grab configuration files. And so it would need an IAM role in order to do that. So I could select all that here. We'll just ignore it. Next thing is how I'm going to distribute the AMI. I can specify which regions to deploy this to. This is really nice. So snapshot and creating the AMI. I'm building this right now in Northern Virginia, but then I can say, okay, not just Northern Virginia, but go to these three other regions or however many regions we want to. All right, so I've got my recipe. Remember, this was all part of the pipeline. Uh, oh, this, this whole thing was a pipeline. Describing which components is the recipe. The components describe specific installations of a specific, you know, whatever scripts you're gonna run. Uh, what the infrastructure you're deploying it on, and then also how you're going to distribute that AMI. Let's create that pipeline. Takes a second. Oh, there you go. Lots of green. Wow. And it tells me everything was created at once. All right. So now I've got this marketing pipeline. I can. I said I wanted to run it manually, so I'm going to select it, actions, run that pipeline. So now that pipeline should be starting to run, and hopefully I'll have a new AMI comes out the other end. Let's go take a look at it real quick. I want to show something. Why would I do this? Uh, like, why not just use Packer and Ansible? Um, it's got a couple of nice things that I really like. The first one is an infrastructure configuration. For this is, I'm looking at my pipeline here. I can say, hey, when uh, after you have run this and I have a new AMI, go and launch or go and notify an SNS topic, and that SNS topic me. Uh, maybe drive a Lambda function to go and pick up this new AMI has been, that's been created for the marketing team and then 
you know, I don't know, notify the marketing team or maybe go and rebuild the marketing website with this fresh new AMI. So you could do that. That's one thing I like about it. The other thing I like, which I think is actually cooler, if your components are set up nice. <laughs> so you have to make sure you're doing the right thing. But I can go to Edit Pipeline and I want to go to the Schedule Builder. I could use manual like I had. I could do a cron job, but the schedule builder is even better. I could have this run, let's say, every Monday at 9 p.m. or 9 a.m., right? But I could also say, hey, run that pipeline at the schedule time, but only if there are dependencies that have been updated. So remember, our, each of our components had a, uh, a version. It would The pipeline will go and look and say, oh, someone updated a version or the parent image I, has been updated. So if either of those two are the case, it could go and run and build this new version. Ooh, I like that. So being able to spin it up and build it if there's a change to a component or if the parent uh, image has been updated, then you might be able to maybe run this every day. And you only will have those new AMIs built if there's been a change. So I do like that. So it really kind of creates this or brings that whole pipeline building that you might be doing on-prem and then maybe, you know, importing the images when you're done into uh, your cloud services, it kind of lets you bring in that event-driven architecture into building your AMI images. So let's go over here and let's say, uh, well, actually, let's look, let's look right here. In our image builder, uh, we can go to images and we can see all the images that have been created by image builder. So they're all right here and you can go and select one of them, I guess, and go look at the different versions. But you can also get to them from the AMI page. So here I got two in this environment right now. Um, you can see that there are some, well, actually this one's a better one. There's some tags that have been created by the image builder, like this one and this one. But I also have created a particular tag, which is a purpose of base. Um, right now our marketing one is being built in real time. So uh, you're not seeing it here, but you eventually will see it. It comes up. So I could build these tags. Um, the tags can say, hey, a and uh, you know, send an SNS message. Um, that launches Lambda. Lambda says, oh, go look for all the AMIs that have a purpose of base, I guess, and go and perform some activity. And that activity might also be jumpstart another uh, image builder. So really cool tool. Um, I think uh, the nice thing about it is being able to pull components that other people have built or components that Amazon's providing, or maybe if um, you're a large organization, you have one team that's creating these components and a couple other teams are actually managing the instances, allows you to kind of encode, but also inside of the world of AWS, create these components, a description of what you're gonna build and being able to track the entire process using the same kind of tools and capabilities that you would track any event-driven architecture inside of AWS. Well, that's it on the Image Builder. Uh, my name is Sean McCullough. Hope it was interesting. Thank you for listening.